Hello students, I hope you are all fine and in good health in this audio presentation. I will be discussing a few important in, uh, points or rather you can say some important informations. I will be discussing uh, the story outline also uh, that is related with the summer of the beautiful white hearts. And uh, you can see it is written at the top, summer of the beautiful white horse it is written by william sarvian now first important thing we have to know something about the author william sarvian now william sarvian was an american armenian novelist playwright and a short story writer he was awarded the pulitzer prize for drama in 1940 in 1943, he received Academy Award for Best Story for the film adaptation of his own novel and the name of the novel is, here I quote, The Human Comedy. He was born on 31st August 1908 in California, United States. He died on 18th May 1981 in California, United States. So, about the author I discussed with you all, dear students. Now, let us come to the introduction of the story. Now, this particular story, The Summer of the Beautiful White Horse, is a short story written by William Saroyan and it was published within the collection of short stories entitled my name is Adam. It tells the story of two boys, or rather to say, two poor Armenian boys or uh, Garaglinian boys, because Garaglinian tribe is a part of the Armenian tribe. And here it is also written what I told you all right now that it tells the story of two boys, Adam and Morat who belong to a very poor Garaglinian family and that is Armenian tribe. The two boys live in the San Jaquin Valley in California and this story uh, revolves around that particular place. Now some list of vocabulary and some meanings that these meanings dear students you will find in the text also. First one is pious. Pious means having or showing or expressing a reverence for a deity. Capricious, it is we can say mood swings or inconsistent change of mood. Vagrant, it means a wanderer or a tribe with no established residence or means of support. Stillness, it means tranquility, it means silence. Vineyard, it means plantation of grape vines used in wine making. Orchards, it actually refers to a piece of land uh, related with the plantation of fruits. Irrigation ditches, man made channel used to deliver water to homes, industries and other uses. Trot. Trot actually means to proceed with something. Descendant. It means a system that develops from an earlier simple version. Now some more word meanings. Streak. Streak actually means race. Vazire. It means a name, the name that Morar had given to that horse. Fury, it is related with anger. Reared, it is related or related with the term raised. Snorted, it means breathed out. Alpha, alpha, it is actually a flowering plant. Parlor means a sitting space in a house. And sare, Surrey actually means a country in South East England. But in this particular text, you will find the word Surrey 
that is related with that particular wagon or that particular cart that was driven by John Byro and John Byro you will find it in the text later as we will proceed with the text he was an Armenian farmer now uh, I am coming to the explanation of this particular story point wise and uh, hopefully uh, you will get a better overview of the story also Arab and Morad were cousins and the entire story was narrated by Aram. Aram was 9 years old, Morad was 13 years old. Both of them were very much fond of horse riding. Aram was also fond of horse riding, Morad was also fond of horse riding. They belonged to the Garaglinian tribe of Armenians and this tribe uh, they, uh, they were poor, but they were very much honest. The narrator, at the very beginning of the story, we find he heard a tap on the window of his room. When he looked out, he saw his cousin Morat sitting on a beautiful white horse. He could not believe his eyes because Morat belonged to a poor family. And it is not possible for Morad to afford a horse. He could not afford to buy such a lovely horse. It was not possible for Morad to buy such a lovely horse. So surely he had stolen it or he might have stolen it. Garaglinian family had the reputation for honesty that has been maintained by its family members for hundreds of years. They were very famous for truthfulness and honesty. Everyone trusted them. These people took pride in the fact that they were honest in spite of their poverty. In spite of their poverty, they were very, very honest. Aram could not think that his cousin, a member of the honest tribe, could ever steal. But Morad had actually stolen the horse because it was next to impossible for any member of the Garaglinian tribe to purchase a beautiful white horse for riding. It is practically impossible. Aram justifies the theft to himself reasoning that perhaps it isn't actually stealing unless they try to sell the horse. Now he tried, Aram tried to defend his brother by saying that uh, neither he nor his brother would sell the horse. So unless and until they sell the horse, it is not stealing at all. Unable to resist any longer, Aram hops on the horse behind Morat. As they began to ride, Aram reflects on his cousin's unconventional nature because Morad was indeed a very crazy person. Uh, everyone says he inherited, and here I quote, the crazy streak of the tribe from their uncle Koshrov. Though Morad is not a direct descendant of uncle Koshrov, the tribe believes that Koshrov is the father of his spirit. Actually, the father of Morad was Zorav. And Morad's nature and characteristic traits were very much different from that of his father, Zorav. But in terms of behavior, in terms of antics, in terms of spirit, he attained similarity with the craziest member of the Garaglinian tribe, and the craziest member was none other than Uncle Koshrov, who can be considered, and here I quote, father of his spirit. The two enjoy a long and satisfying ride until Morad orders Aram off the horse, wanting to ride alone because Morad uh, was riding for a long time and the horse was also well familiar with Morad. 
Adam also demands the same. So after Morat finishes his solo ride, Adam climbs back on. But unfortunately for Adam, the horse runs into a neighbor's vineyard where it begins to leap over vines. Adam is soon tossed from the horse. And as a result, what happens? Adam was soon tossed from the horse because he was new uh, who was riding the horse. And the horse recognized, haven't recognized him. And that was the reason the horse was very uncomfortable. So after moving a certain distance, he fell down from the horse. Morat comes running and both boys frantically, means desperately, look for the horse. They eventually find it. Eventually means, dear students, they finally find it and hide it in the stable. Stable, you can say, you can say barn at an abundant vineyard. At this point, Adam realizes that Morad has been hiding and riding the horse for some time and only told him about it that morning. This is very clear at that juncture uh, for Aram that his elder brother Morad was, was riding and hiding and riding the horse for a long time. And it was early morning that particular day that he came and he knocked on the door of Aram so that Aram can also have a right. But it seems that Morad was secretly uh, having a ride on this horse for a long, long time. Okay, now let me move on uh, to the next line. When Aram questions him about this, Morad again refuses to give details, claiming he doesn't want Aram to have to lie if they are caught. The boy returns home. Now, Morad is also very good at heart. He was not eager to give the blame to Aram at all. He wanted to take all the accusations and all the blames on his own shoulders. He doesn't want Aram to face it. Later in the day, a farmer by the name of John Byro visits Aram's house. Byro mentions that his horse was stolen a month ago and is still missing and John Byro he looked very depressed he looked very disappointed upon hearing this Aram confronts Morat he wants Morat to promise that the horse won't be returned until he can learn how to ride to this Morat complains that it would take a year for Aram to master riding a horse the boys settle on returning the horse in six months and ride it every morning. Because now it was very sure to Aram that this horse actually belonged to none other than John Baido. Finally, he interacted with Morat. He told Morat that please don't return the horse until and unless I learned riding the horse. In reply to that, Morat told him that it would take for him a year to learn to master riding on the horse then finally they decided that within six months they will return the horse but each and every morning in the early hours of the morning they will have a ride each and every morning one day weeks later two weeks later the boys are riding the horse back to the deserted vineyard and ran into John Byro. So John Byro saw them along with his horse. Byro observes that the horse resembles the one he had lost. Even its teeth are the same. So Byro went on inspecting the horse, thinking that it was exactly similar to his one. If not for honest reputation of their family, Byro says he would think the boys had stolen his horse. He remarks that, and here I quote a very important line, a suspicious man would believe his eyes instead of his heart and goes on his way. Though he was a bit suspicious, he doubted, but because of the reputation of the family to be honest and truthful, John Byro haven't said anything to them 
and goes on his way. Byro's faith in their family makes them feel sorry and they realize their mistake and they both decided to return the horse to its rightful owner. So I am moving on to the final point. I started with that point right now only. So I am repeating it. Byro's faith in their family makes them feel sorry for their action. The two boys says goodbye to the horse and return it to John Byro's barn early the next morning because it seems that it pricked their conscience. So ultimately without uh, keeping the horse for a long time that initially they thought they would have kept it, they had returned the horse the next day to its rightful owner. That afternoon Byro brings the horse to Aram's house claiming that it is, and here I quote, stronger than ever and better tempered than before. And Bairo, who looked very sad the previous evening, when he came once again and sat in the parlor in the house of Aram, he interacted in a very jovial manner with Aram's mother and told her that uh, under mysterious circumstances, the one stolen horse was returned back to him and it was in his barn and one positive thing was that the horse is stronger than ever and better tempered than before. Thank you dear students. So that is the storyline of this particular uh, chapter. I will be discussing the text with you all. I hope like this particular uh, short storyline will help you clear the idea regarding the story and it will also help in your concept clearing also. Uh, so dear students kindly listen to this audio presentation and if there is any doubt anywhere do let me know about it. Thank you students. Thank you all.